into the cold, dark night. The light of the thinking consciousness will be extinguished forever. Could you explain why Debrin and Ilenkov so obsessed with claiming Spinoza, to the point where they claim he's Marx without a beard? Hell no! But who is Deborin? I don't know who Deborin. I'm so ignorant. I'm so sorry. I, I'm looking him up now. Uh, he was a Soviet philosopher. I have never read. I didn't even. I've never even heard of him before. I forgive Ilyenkov. Did he, Ilyenkov actually say Spinoza was Marx without a beard? Because that's extremely disgusting. But I, for, I guess I'll forgive him. That was just because of. Uh, Ilyenkov rehabilitates Spinoza because Ilyenkov is also facing this issue of the ontological question. What are the implications of Marx's materialism for being? And Ilyenkov's response to that is basically to say that in order to consistently be materialist, we have to basically adopt a notion of the Spinoza's substance. How do you reconcile the, ex the fact of thinking and consciousness and thoughts with a materialist ontology. So, and for Ilyenkov, um, thought, consciousness, and reason, and spirit are attributes of substance, of a material substance of some kind. Now, this is a metaphysical view and not a materialist view. It's a metaphysical view because um, substance is, uh, is um, a, a dogmatic concept of, of thought. It, it doesn't actually have any determinate particular reality, right? So it's a complete misunderstanding of materialism, which is, um, which is uh, inherent in Soviet Marxism-Leninism, actually, not just Ilyenkov. It's an inherent limitation. They cannot actually justify why, what Lenin did. <laughs> Lu so basically, Lukacs and all of them are trying to deal with this split represented by the Second International between the flat object of Marxist consciousness, historical materialism, the class struggle and everything, and then these, like the structure of the party form. So Soviet Marxism-Leninism is inheriting the same problem Lukacs inherited. They're all trying to like make sense of how these two... Now, Stalin doesn't have an issue with this. He understands it intu intuitively. But when you're looking at this from a conscious philosophical perspective, you end up with these deviations like Ilyenkov, where you have to justify it with Spinoza. So Ilyenkov is the mirror image of Lukacs, actually. Lukacs response to it with Kant, which is basically this um, exaggeration of uh, the, the kind of transcendent side of, of consciousness, right, in negation. Whereas Lukács is investing too much um, at the level of imminence and uh, not negation, but um, some dogmatic, reified form of positive being in the form of substance. But it's two sides of the same coin. But the difference is, I like Ilyenkov. I like Ilyenkov. Why? Because Ilyenkov was brave enough to, like, in, in a very Russian way, arrive at uh, consequences of his thinking. Like, the highest conclusion. If he really wants to reconcile dialectical materialism with an ontology... So for him, the high, the, this is the conclusion of dialectical materialism and resolving this contradiction between material substance and the thinking spirit, which is the highest attribute of substance. The thinking spirit enters a limit eventually, which is also a problem of, of natural science, the, the existential problem imposed upon us, of entropy. Now, if you don't know what this issue of, of entropy is from the second law of thermodynamics, basically, there's a heat death of the universe that awaits us. Eventually, there will be no more free energy that gives rise to novelty and that we will just cold, everything will just get cold and we'll all just freeze and, and die. There will be no more free energy to be used by the system, the closed system that is the cosmos. Okay? 
So Ilyenko also understands this in the form of the thinking spirit reaching the highest point of its development, at which point, um, as an attribute of substance, it can no longer gener it can no longer um, participate in creative and novel forms in the cosmos. Thinking spirit will reach this calcifying point in which it um, is faced with the possibility that it may uh, descend into the recesses of substance, into the cold, dark night. The light of the thinking consciousness will be extinguished forever. Scary. So what does Ilyenkov say? And that's why I like him. Ilyenkov says that we will reach a certain point in the highest development of our um, history as human beings when we achieve communism and, and farther and farther in the past and at the highest point of the development of the thinking spirit will culminate in an apocalyptic collective and heroic act of self-sacrifice. We will engage in this act of complete self-destruction, initiating a cosmic, a cosmic uh, catastrophe of some kind, which will basically unleash a new threshold uh, uh, for energy, for, for things to, for the cosmos, to, for the process, the cycle to start again. So we will basically engage in like this apocalyptic, cosmic, self-sacrificial self act of destroying ourselves and destroying everything somehow. And that from that destruction, from the incandescent vapors resulting in that act of destruction, new worlds can be born. And therefore, new thinking beings can be born which at a certain stage in their development will, will restart the cycle. So we, are going to, we have to restart the cycle in order that the thinking spirit does not descend into the recesses, the dark and cold recesses of, of substance. And it's, it, it's, it's very much ethically rigorous and consistent. I'm just not really explaining it with all that, ju all that much justice. But I like, I like that a lot. I just like it. I appreciate the boldness and bravery and ambition of that. And, and maybe that's actually the secret of what I'm doing. And, and that's the secret of what my goal is. Maybe my whole MO is that we have reached that point. And that I'm doing everything within my power. I'm just kidding. I don't agree with Ilyenkov. Uh, but not, for, not because I think his conclusions are too radical. Um, I don't agree with his Spinozism. 